Hey guys, so here is the Stinger VIP. Uh, in this video, I just want to kind of walk through the different settings and options, uh, show you how the alerts sound, uh, show you what some of the features are. That way you get familiar with the interface and, uh, you know, the features and options that the Stinger VIP has available. Now, I've been running this guy for about a week now. I am definitely by not, I'm not by any means like an expert at all. I'm still, you know, really getting familiar with it. I've uh, just been testing it for the past week and I'm actually sending it back later today. Um, so I'm still kind of a noob uh, when it comes to the Stinger VIP, but I do want to go ahead and show you the uh, menu options, the features, so uh, while I still have one on hand, just show you what it's all about. So basically, uh, here's the display for it. You can see we've got our uh, back plate, and then uh, the actual display is like magnetically attached onto it, so it is removable. Um, the way the display works is we've got our touch screen right here, and then we have this uh, Stinger button right there, which will pull us into kind of the main menu so we can go dig through uh, our options and all. There's also a couple different hidden buttons. So like, uh, there's a Stinger button right here, and then on the display we have actually five hidden buttons. There's one up here, one up here, and then three on the side. They're all on the um, kind of black frame. So uh, I've got it programmed and they're all programmable, but these hidden buttons here, I've got programmed to adjust like volume, for example, volume up, volume down. I can turn K-band on and off on the fly right here, kind of like you can do on the V1. Uh, don't always know exactly where it is, but maybe I have to be on the pilot screen to see it. Um, somewhere. Uh, it is kind of tricky to press sometimes, and also not having this guy clamped down does make it a little bit tougher to press the button sometimes, but uh, there it is. So you can press that button, that's better. And then you can see K-Band was turned off, and then K-Band is turned on. Uh, this is the uh, kind of main pilot screen. It tells us uh, all of our basic information. Up at the top left, zero is our speed. Uh, mute under, if we have low speed muting, it'll mute under a certain speed, 10 miles an hour, 30, or whatever we want. Northeast is our direction we're traveling, and then we've also got our clock. Uh, it also tells us what bands we have turned on and off. Uh, radar we have turned on, uh, and you can see X-band I have currently turned off. The spot list is basically like your red light camera database. So any uh, points that are marked, whether they're speed cameras, red light cameras, what have you, uh, I have those turned on so I do get notified and uh, it does seem to be like a pretty good database. Laser I have uh, disabled, I don't have jammers plugged in so you see it grayed out and also the red line. Uh, for specs, specs is kind of an automated VAS car. It's basically uh, not used here in the States, but in some places uh, with a camera, they'll take a picture of you when you enter a tunnel or some corridor or something. And then down the road, they'll take a second picture of you. They'll see how long it takes you to travel from A to B, uh, therefore calculate your speed and then mail you a ticket. So it's kind of an automated VAS car. There's no radar alerts. It's basically GPS based alert type stuff. Uh, we don't have it in use here, so I have it turned off. Uh, safety is kind of the SWS, the safety warning system, not really in use either, but uh, used to say there's construction zones here or emergency vehicles coming or whatever, but I have it turned on for testing. I haven't seen any SWS alerts. And then on the bottom right, we have a button for add a fixed spot. Um, sorry for the reflections, there we go. So I can basically tap this button and uh, do I wanna add this location to the database? And if I do and I say yes, then every time I pass, spot list. whoops, did I just spot list. Alarm. remove? Hit it by accident. Okay. It's just the way I'm holding it's kind of weird so I don't have it mounted. But uh, so spot list every time you arrive at a location, it'll actually tell you. So handy for red light cameras and all that good stuff. Uh, now another thing that I really like is um, well actually let's go ahead and just uh, trigger some alerts and I'll show you how those look. Uh, we'll hit it with KA band first. Okay, so there's our KA band alert, and you can see uh, red, it deems it a high threat. We've got our strength meter, our frequency information, and on the right, uh, that's actually kind of our directional information. Forward for signals ahead of us, it'll go to the back if it's behind, and then two to the side if it's, uh, well, we're passing it. So kind of like the V1 in that sense, you do have your directional information. There's also on the bottom right, you can see add to false list, so we can uh, lock out the signal, like you can do with the Escort Valentine products. You can now uh, lock out the signals, K band or even KA, which is pretty sweet. Uh, you also have the option, I'm gonna press this hidden button here that I've programmed in to display the spectrum analyzer. So this is pretty slick. When we get a signal here, you can actually see the signal pop up there on the spectrum analyzer just like that. Uh, to see when you got a really strong signal, you can see multiple signals at once. Uh, that's the way that Stinger displays it. I like it, it's kind of the geeky, nerdy way of displaying signals, and you'll see that the frequency even goes to four decimal places, so pretty slick there, I like that. Um, we can also take a look, uh, if we hit it with K-band, you should be able to see the, uh, the signal also pop up there on K-band. Ba-bam, look at that. 24.1305, so very, very pre precise. 
and uh, you can see we have the option to mute the alert, that button pops up, or we can add it to the false list and lock the signal out. So uh, that's the spectrum analyzer display. We'll go ahead and switch back now to the uh, main display. There we go. Okay, and now let's go ahead and just uh, dive right into the menu and take a look. So to do that, we're gonna press this uh, stinger button and you can change the color of that if you want, which is kind of slick. Uh, Pilot was that main screen that we were just looking at. Takes you right there. Okay. Uh, settings. Let's go ahead and just uh, run through the settings. And so this is going to be the majority of the, uh, well, the settings. Kind of makes sense, right? So we'll look at the radar settings, and we have the options of turning individual bands on and off. X band, K band, uh, KA. There's segmentation available for 338, 341, 347, and 355. You can see I've got it 338, 347, and 355. Basically 258 enabled. Uh, false list I have turned on just or turned off for the video, but uh, normally I'll drive with it turned on. Very handy. That's your GPS lockouts essentially. Uh, K-band radars. You have two different types of radar signals you can alert to. Uh, you can do. Oops, I click over there. Okay, uh, all K-band or only low powered. So I've got all since it's not just low powered in use here in the states. We'll go back and sorry, I know the button presses are a little bit weird because I don't have it mounted. And sometimes it doesn't really like press back against my fingers. So. That's not really a normal thing, that's just kind of my temporary install weirdness. But anyways, dynamic sensitivity, you can adjust the sensitivity if you're driving faster or slower. Have it turned off for testing, um, but it really does help uh, quiet things down in town. So I'll normally run in practice with that turned on, and that seems to be the recommended setting. Scan mode, we have three different options for uh, reactivity. Regular is going to be the slowest, pop is going to be the fastest, quick trigger is in the middle. The faster you go, the more false alerts you get, but the more likely you are to catch any brief alerts. So I've got it currently set for QT. I've been playing between the three. Uh, pop mode will help you catch pop, uh, 67 and 16 millisecond pop, which is pretty sweet. Um, regular is slower. Quick trigger is not actually that that quick. I'm hoping that's something that they work on, but uh, it does have a quick trigger functionality. Uh, go to faster ones, you get more blind spot falses. Go to slower ones, it helps cut them down. Okay, let's go back. Scroll through here, uh, in-car radar filter. That's pretty slick too. So if you're driving a car like an Audi or a Mercedes or whatever, and you actually have uh, your car is a uh, blind spot falsing car, right? Your car is gonna be transmitting radar the whole time. And if that's the case, you can turn on the in-car radar filter. And what it'll do is it's noticing, hey, there's always this radar signal that's happening independent of my location. It's not like I'm driving past a speed sign or anything or a grocery store, right? Because the radar is coming from my vehicle, uh, it can say, ah, filter out this signal um, because it's coming from my car. And if you have a car that uh, is blind spot falsing, you can actually uh, filter that out with the in-car radar filter. So that's pretty slick. I haven't seen that in any other radar detectors yet. We can go into the laser options. Uh, I don't have uh, laser jammers plugged into the car currently, so I've got it turned off, but you can see we've got uh, automatic JTK here for five seconds or whatever, or infinite shielding, good for testing. Uh, side lasers, if you've got uh, laser jammers pointed out to the side as well, you've got that stuff available. Uh, fixed locations, basically if you've got red light cameras and all that kind of stuff, which I do here in the area, I have it turned on, and then when I pass by it tells me uh, with the spot list that uh, I'm, you know, approaching one and passing one. Does a really good job with the alerting, too. Uh, specs, that's the thing I mentioned earlier where um, it'll track you with uh, cameras, you know. Take a picture when you're entering, take another picture when you're leaving. <clears throat> figure out how fast you're driving. Uh, I've got it turned off because it's not in use here. Alert behavior, you have three different sensitivity levels with the Stinger. Uh, extra quiet, normal, and extra distance. Or sometimes we call it zero, which is kind of this midpoint, or plus one or minus one. You can hit change, and yeah, there you go. So you can see zero, and I can go to minus one for more quiet, or plus one for maximum sensitivity. Uh, I do find that uh, plus one gives you the most range in testing, um, but from what I understand, you also get Few more false alerts. So, you know, trade offs and balance. And again, I'm still kind of a noob to all this, figuring out the, you know, the nuances, and there's still tons of firmware changes and updates and all that kind of stuff. But that's what I'm seeing so far. Okay. Uh, and these ones are kind of less important, but mileage log, you can have it, uh, if you turn it on, it can log when you're doing business miles or personal miles. Uh, kind of a needed uh, or a neat added feature. Safety signals. Um, SWS type stuff. If you're getting this, uh, you have the option of displaying those alerts. Police check, I'm not actually sure what that does. Uh, display, you can adjust you know, the brightness of the display. You can change the, um, the color of that S. I currently have it set to blue, which is the default. Uh, oh, auto brightness, that's slick. I didn't know it had that. Adjust the brightness of that S. Turn it off altogether if you want. Uh, sound, you can adjust your, uh, 
you know, your volume and sound settings. Do you want it to mute your radio? Uh, what volume do you want? Do you want to start up sound? I typically prefer that disabled. Uh, speed sense, that's pretty handy. I have it turned off again for testing or for, well, for this video just so that you guys can hear it. But basically this is low speed muting. And if you're traveling under a certain speed, you can have it uh, both mute a signal and also reduce sensitivity of different bands. You'll notice um, there's a bunch of different levels here, right? There's like five different levels of uh, what it does. So it's more sophisticated than saying, well, if I'm traveling below a certain speed, just mute. Like there's a lot more going on. And I don't know the details of what it does at level one versus level two, level three, like is one, you know, 80% sensitivity, 90% sensitivity, 100%. Like I, I'm totally making that up. I don't know what it is, but you can see there's much more uh, sophistication in the low speed muting options it has here. And that feature is called uh, Speed Sense. Um, and system settings, we can go in here and adjust things like the time. Uh, it is GPS based, but you can go in and you know change, uh, you know, based on time zone and stuff. Expert mode, miles, kilometers, delete your false list data, which is your GPS lockouts. Um, you can switch the front and rear display like uh, if you plug the uh, the radar antennas into the wrong port and front and rear it gets confused, you're moving it or whatever, you can have it, uh, you can just say, oh, whoops, I got them backwards and switch that way. It's kind of nifty. Uh, logging, this is kind of nice. Uh, this is something I really, really like about Stinger is you can do different levels of logging. I currently have it set to level two, which is the max, and it basically says all the information that it's capturing. I have a uh, USB stick actually plugged into the, um, in my glove box. Uh, I've, there's a USB stick plugged into the main Stinger CPU, and it logs every alert that I get, legit alerts, false alerts, whatever, and I can send it back to Stinger for analysis. So if they see, for example, a blind spot false that punches through the VIP, they can actually analyze it and do some really sophisticated analysis and say, ah, this is what a blind spot false looks like. I'm going to go ahead and learn this one and filter it out based on the look of the signal. Uh, it's something that uh, we've kind of been promised from other detectors like the Max with the whole DNA thing, which didn't really pan out. But the idea is it can take a look at the signal and look at things like uh, whether it's, you know, frequency modulated versus continuous wave. It can take a look at a whole bunch of parameters other than things like uh, signal strength or using a half second delay for TSR or whatever. It's a much, much more sophisticated method of filtering out blind spot falses. Uh, it's not totally perfect, it's not totally perfect, but it does seem to do a pretty good job. Uh, anyways, this logging uh, basically logs everything in really fine detail, so you can take the logs and send it back to home base at Stinger. Uh, they can look at the logs and help improve things over time based on what users are seeing. So that's pretty slick, I really like that. And that's just kind of, you know, system settings, logging. Uh, that's back there, so. Okay, cool, so that's kind of the settings menu. Um, let's go back again. Uh, info, what else? Contact Stinger, look at versions and stuff, from where I presume. Back, uh, well, we can turn it off. Uh, settings is where we just were. Transfer data, what does that do? Oh, okay, so we can export our mileage log and police check data to that USB key, that's kind of slick. And then, and again, sorry about the back button thing, that shouldn't be an issue for like a normal install, but my thing is kind of, you know, bouncing around, I can't get a good press. Um, and then finally, erase. Uh, if you want to erase all the radar functionality whatsoever, uh, for whatever reason, and just turn it into a trip computer that's monitoring, you know, how far you're driving, business, personal, all that kind of stuff, you can disable all of the radar functionality and erase everything. And then uh, when you get back home, if you want to re-enable that functionality, you do have that option, so. Anyways, uh, that's just a quick look here at uh, the display and the interface for this uh, Stinger VIP. Uh, Performance-wise, this thing is a monster. It's doing amazing in testing. It's really cool. Um, it does still need a little bit of tweaking and work, but uh, Stinger's really, really good as far as being responsive, listening to users, and implementing feature requests, so that's awesome. Uh, but anyways, that's just a quick look at uh, the Stinger VIP, kind of the menus, the features, the options, and so forth, and uh, what all is available. So. Hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.